Materials Shoulds Limited against Werrit Limited. The principal issue on this appeal uh, concerns the meaning of the word makes in section 60, subsection 1A of the Patents Act 1977, which provides that a person infringes a patent for a particular product if he, quote, makes, unquote, the product without the consent of the patentee. This issue arises in respect of a patent of which a company called Protechna is the proprietor. Claim one of the patent extends to certain aspects of a complete intermediate bulk container, IBC. An IBC is a large container used by suppliers of liquids, who are called fillers, for the transport of a wide range of liquids to a so-called end user. IBCs consist of a metal cage into which a large plastic container or bottle is fitted. The inventiveness of the patent uh, lies in the idea of flexible weld joints to the cage to increase its strength and durability, and in the idea of introducing a dimple on either side of the weld and a raised central portion. The description of the patent acknowledges that the bottle is replaceable. Often the bottle cannot be reused because it contains residues of a toxic liquid or because it has been physically damaged. The cage has a life expectancy of around five or six times longer than the bottle, which is why so-called reconditioners engage in rebottling or cross-bottling used IBCs. In either case, the old bottle is removed, any damage to the cage is repaired, and a new bottle is fitted within the cage. Rebottling involves replacing the bottle with a fresh bottle from the original manufacturer. Cross-bottling involves replacing the bottle with a bottle from a different source. After rebottling or cross-bottling an IBC, uh, the reconditioner offers the reconditioned IBC to fillers in competition with the products of original manufacturers and other reconditioners. The respondent, Schutz, is the exclusive licensee of Protechna in the United Kingdom. The appellant, Werrit, sells bottles for IBCs to a reconditioner called Delta. Delta acquires discarded IBCs originally put on the market by Schutz. It replaces the original bottles with Werrit bottles and then offers these cross-bottled IBCs on the market. These cross-bottled IBCs are therefore in competition uh, with the original Schutz IBCs. Schutz objected to Delta's cross-bottling activities and issued proceedings against Werrit on the ground uh, that if Delta infringes the patent, so does Werrit. The principal issue which arises on this appeal is whether, in, whether Delta infringes the patent by making the article claimed by the claim con contrary to section 61A. A subsidiary issue which arises, strictly speaking, only if it is found that Delta infringes the patent concerns the effect of section 68 of the 1977 Act, which impinges on the right to recover costs and damages. The High Court, Mr Justice Floyd, held that Delta's cross-bottling activities do not amount to making the patent product on the ground that the inventive concept of the claim is wholly embodied in the Schutz cage. The Court of Appeal considered that it was inappropriate to determine the issue by reference to the inventive concept and held that Delta's cross-bottling activities amounted to making the patented product on the basis that the Schutz IBC ceases to exist when the Schutz bottle is removed and all that remains at that stage is merely an important component from which a new IBC could be made. The Supreme Court unanimously allows where it's appeal. We hold that Delta does not make the patented article contrary to subsection 1A of section 60. Uh, the word makes in the section does not have a precise meaning. It must be interpreted contextually by reference to the facts of the particular case and in a practical way. A number of factors are relevant. The price, precise scope of a claim may be a matter almost of happenstance. The word makes must be given a meeting, meaning which is a matter of ordinary language it can reasonably bear. There is a need for clarity and certainty for patentees and for others and for those advising them. It should also be borne in mind that the word makes applies to patents for all sorts of different products. There is a need to protect the patentee's monopoly while not stifling reasonable competition. It will inevitably be a, a matter of fact and degree in many cases whether a particular activity involves making a particular article. 
The mere fact that an activity involves replacing a constituent part of an article does not mean that that activity involves the making of a new article rather than constituting a repair of the original article. It is both legitimate and helpful to consider the question whether the bottle is such a subsidiary part of the patented article that its replacement when required does not involve making a new article. This case represents a classic example of identifying the various factors which apply on the particular facts, and after weighing them all up, reaching a conclusion on infringement. Given that the bottle is a freestanding, replaceable component of the patented article, has no connection with the claimed inventive concept, has a much shorter life expectancy than the other inventive component, cannot be described as the main component of the article, and apart from replacing it, Delta does no additional work to the article beyond routine repairs. Delta does not, quote, make, unquote, the patented article contrary to section 60 1A of the 1977 Act. This decision renders where its appeal on, sec on the section 68 issue academic, although the court discusses the arguments on that issue as well. The court is now adjourned.